Oh, the moon has come, the day is done, the night has covered up the sun. I have stood so often before you to pray, but I wonder, oh Lord, tell me what did I do today? Did I remember the words of al Fatiha? Did I take time to thank you for all that I have? Did I call on you to guide my way? Tell me what did I do today? Da 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 Welcome back to another episode of Back to Basics. I'm your host, Abdul Rahim Saeed, and we have with us in the studio today our wonderful guest, Dr. Mamdouh Mohammed. Dr. Mamdouh, welcome back to the studio. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, Dr. Mamdouh Mohammed is a former professor at Johns Hopkins University. He is the current director of Arrow for Consulting and Training. He has worked in several universities across the globe, as well as traveling extensively and teaching uh, new methodologies and working in the field of education and dawa. And he's traveled as far east as Indonesia and as far west as the United States of America. Dr. Mamdouh, welcome. Thank you. In previous episodes, we've discussed topics ranging from teaching methodologies, improving training, improving education, improving administration, and so on. Uh, I think it's fair to say that overall we've been talking about raising the bar. The raising the bar that we set in terms of the bar for teachers, the bar for students, the bar for parents, the bar for administration, the bar for inspectors, the bar for the ministries of education, and so on. Uh, would you say then that raising the bar is essential for progress? It's not just something that's beneficial, but it's essential. We have to have that spirit? I think you've, you've answered it. <laughs> uh, the, the main reason for this is that the whole world now is competing mm -hmm. and very aggressively competing with each other. In all fields, they are competing. And the whole world as well is a customer, is considered customers. Okay. So I'm a customer because I buy this product, I buy this product, I, I buy this quality of education, I buy this quality of teachers. Mm -hmm. So if we are not raising the bar, the competition will be very slow. And people now are not willing to tolerate that. Mm -hmm. They want things better. You buy a car, and after a few months, you discover that there is a mistake or an error in the car, and you find the car is recalling these cars to improve them. Yeah. Right. And if they don't do this, you will find that there is a drop in the product. A lot of people don't, don't buy, don't continue. Yeah. They move to another company. They move to another school. They moved. So here, if the bar is stable, you don't improve. Mm -hmm. You don't improve. You can see even in any field of uh, sport, mm -hmm. you find a record number. Yeah. This record number is not stable. It changes from one year into another. Mm -hmm. You find if the record number increases here, is raised here, that means the bar is raised for all the people who are involved in this game. Yeah. They need to, to, to exceed that. Then it is exceeded. Then after that, the bar has already been raised. Yeah. So you need to exceed that and so on. And, so on. and this is a positive sign of good progress and improvement in the world. Yes. Try to imagine that while this is happening in most of the countries, advanced countries nowadays, yeah. it's almost uh, stand still as... Stagnant in some countries. Yes, in some countries. And it's not even at a point where it's... Uh, covering the basics. It's yeah. already below what it should below be. Below the level. Below the, below the level. Yeah. This is something usually this time you find it in the many reports of an inspection mm -hmm. that tells you that it's below level. Yeah. Or in another word, unacceptable. It's unacceptable progress. So sort because of Because like if you continue to do this, you will move from here to here. <laughs> because the whole world has already shifted and moved from here to here. You are going to the reverse. Yeah. And uh, this is very dangerous, particularly in many developing countries. Mm -hmm. We need to stop. In other words, we need to speed up. Because yes. we have to catch up, too. Yeah. yeah. And the only thing that helps us in doing this is education. Mm -hmm. So the key word for changing countries now is education. 
through yeah. training and new methods Absolutely. and so on. The quality of education, and here we have the key issue here is the teachers, because any improvement in the quality of teaching, it reflects directly to the improvement of the quality of the students, mm -hmm. and those students are the ones who are going to graduate, and in very short time, they will be the leaders of the society. In other words, in these schools, you prepare the leaders of the future. Okay. If we look at it from this, it is a very serious matter. Mm -hmm. It's not just a matter of... It's the future of the country. Yeah. yeah. It's not a matter of financial resources that, that the country has. Some countries have some financial re resources, but they don't know how to improve. Mm -hmm. you can't just, it's not a matter of just throwing money at the problem. You yeah. have to invest it properly. Yes. In and this is even for every parent. Yeah. I would advise every parent, and every teacher, individuals, even private teaching, yeah. you have to teach students that you are raising the bars. Mm -hmm. Today, you memorized five ayat of the Quran. Mm -hmm. You move to the other five. Then you move to the other five. Mm -hmm. I would not say, if I see my students, mm -hmm. that they are memorizing every day five ayat. Yeah. If they are doing this, going on on the same thing, Mm -hmm. So that means I'm going to end at a certain time, let's say after three years. Yeah. But if it ca I can do this job in two years, why shouldn't I do it? Mm -hmm. So just by raising the bar from five to six or to seven, I can make the time shorter. And life is time. And so if you will use this effectively, you can save a lot of things and you can benefit from a lot of things. So the parents should have all the time this. If my child answered the five questions mm -hmm. that were given to him by the teacher of math at home. Yeah. They find that he finished this in 10 minutes. Immediately, I would ask him, why don't you do number six? Why don't you do number six and seven? Since you still have time left. So, yeah, you are raising the bar. Even if the teacher is not doing this, you are doing this at home. Because uh, we work with teacher very well. Mm -hmm. So if the teacher does, did not understand this concept, right? Now I'm teaching it to the teacher indirectly, in yeah. a very polite way. So when the student goes back to Showing the, the teacher, teacher... that they could have done more with the time. Yeah, yeah, the teacher would understand this. So anyway, after that, the teacher would know that if you can finish five, try to do extra two. Yeah. So in this way, we give room to what? To the students who are advanced. Remember, those students who are advanced are the ones who are going to raise the whole level of the country. Those are the ones who are going to pull up the rest of the students or the rest of the citizens or the rest of the people in the country. If we don't have, if we don't have a special education for those students who are in the top, the whole society will be in the middle. Dr. Mamdouh, do we have any examples uh, in other schools or in um, schools that you might have inspected personally where they were at a lower level and they raised the bar and how did they uh, apply, uh, how can we apply this lesson across the board? Yes, uh, most of the reports that I've been involved in through an inspection, one of the recommendations was raising the bar. And this is not just uh, a policy of writing the report in that way, but it's a policy of a country. Mm -hmm. How the country asks us, uh, or the country decides this bar from year to year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to say that this is taken from the Islamic sources. I think it's something common among human beings. Mm -hmm. But Islam itself has this principle yes. of raising the, the bar. For example, the fasting. Mm -hmm. Muslims fast the month of Ramadan, a whole month of Ramadan. Yes. What's a great achievement for Muslims that they do every year. Mm -hmm. However, after that, people tend to relax. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, you find the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu is trying to raise the bar. Yeah. It asks the Muslims, after they reach the successfully finished fasting the month of Ramadan, they ask the Muslims to Fast the of practice this in the month of Shawwal. Yeah. So any Muslim is not enough for him 
Of course, as an obligation, it's enough to fast Ramadan, yet they are very motivated and they are encouraged to fast six days in the month of Shawwal. So this is a kind of raising the bar mm -hmm. and motivating the Muslims, pushing the Muslims to do this. It is enough to do this, but yet there are some people that you need to. These are how you, you help other people to move from just this level of basic foundations and basic obligatory yeah. uh, issues in Islam to another high level. Then after Shawwal even, mm -hmm. right, you can in be encouraged, you are encouraged to fast two days per week, or yes. even you are encouraged to fast every other day as the Prophet ﷺ praised the fasting of uh, Dawood. Uh, Prophet Dawood. Yes. So this is another strong uh, evidence that Islam encourages people to move from this bar to another higher bars in every aspect of Islam. Well, I'd say that in a sense, uh, I agree with you obviously, that uh, Islam sets a standard and that Ramadan is a month that we all have to fast and then there's a bar that people can pass where they can also do the six days of Shawal. Yes. What I would argue is that the month of Ramadan uh, obligates upon us the duty of improving ourselves as Muslims yearly because when you yes. go into Ramadan, you're not just abstaining from food and drink, you're also trying to be a more honest person, you're trying to avoid uh, foul language, you're trying to pray yeah. more, so you're praying Qiyam, you're yeah, praying yeah, at yeah. night when people go to pray Tarawih. Remember, this is the basic. This is the basic, but it's a basic that we don't have the rest of the year and that we try to take with us for the next year. Yes. If someone can be like they are in Ramadan for all of the year, obviously this is a higher bar than we're used to, and this is a good thing. No doubt, yeah. which is not encouraged, by the way, <laughs> in terms of fasting. We're not. No, encouraged. I'm not talking about the fasting itself. Yes, I'm talking, about, talking about other what issues. we take as lessons the from quality, Ramadan: yeah, reading Quran, manners, reading Quran reading, more, yes. being more honest, yes. spending more time You're with right. your family, praying at night. You don't have to obviously not praying at night every single night, but there's always room for competition and yeah. for excelling. And so I find Islam encourages this healthy competition uh, of improving yourself religiously and in your devotion to Allah Subhanahu yes. Taala. And this is a type of raising the bar, is it not? Uh, the, uh, for example, in the issue of salah mm -hmm. itself, the nawafil themselves are yeah. classified as raising bar. Yeah, and then you have different degrees. So you can start, let's say, with some of the more encouraged ones like praying rakatain uh, yes. before fajr, yes. praying doha, and so on. Yes. Alhamdulillah, and, and, and all these aspects. And this is something very important. If this is something that we can deduce from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. Uh, obligates us with. So we need to apply this in the field of education. Mm -hmm. We need to apply it in everything in the house yeah. and in everything in the school. Mm -hmm. So if a school does not adopt this policy, yeah. definitely they will end up somewhere below. In the low, below. Yeah. And um, That's right, if they're even at the passing mark to begin with. Yeah. In many cases, the like we mentioned, mark. this is the passing. In mark. many cases, we find that the schools that don't improve are the ones that aren't even at a decent level to begin with. Yes, and that's very unfortunate. So then, what can people do? What can what can I do as an average citizen to improve the state uh, of schools and encourage them to want to raise the bar to become better? What about students who grow up in a culture that doesn't encourage raising the bar, where basically the minimum job is done? Nobody's looking for that excellency in what they do. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we said that when we do training for the teachers mm -hmm. and they would understand about this concept of raising the bar, yeah. they come back to make the change. Mm -hmm. They come back and explain this to other teachers. They come back to adopt this in their classrooms. In their and, lives even, yeah. And in their lives as well. But we need to get this concept. And I think that uh, you can imagine that how many people mm -hmm. uh, would benefit from understanding this concept of raising the bar. Mm -hmm. And the role of TVs, the role of uh, Al Huda TV and Peace TV in raising the bar mm -hmm. for the Muslims. Yeah. We always try to encourage them and motivate them to reach to uh, this high level and don't just accept the passing grade or the minimum. Mm -hmm. Because the more we increase the number of people who want to go up the bar, mm -hmm. the better for any society. Okay, Jazakallah khairan. Uh, we're going to get back to these points, inshallah, but right inshallah. after the break, Jazakallah khairan.
It's always a pleasure to have you in the studio. Join us right after this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Qalu ajitana litafikana an alihatina fa'tina bima ta'iduna in kunta minas. السماوات والأرض وإلى الله ترجع الأمور فلما رأوه أعظا مستقبل أوديتهم قالوا هذا عارض ممطرنا بل هو ما استعجلتم فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما فاكهة ونخل ورمان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and welcome back to the show, Back to Basics, with our guest Dr. Mamdouh Muhammad. Dr. Mamdouh, welcome back to the show. Just before the break, we were talking about the essential uh, need for raising the bar across the board, not just in education, but also as Muslims, always looking to better ourselves. Um, going on that topic, what would you say are the steps that students can do to raise the bar as well? I mean, it's, it's not always the teacher's responsibility, but the students as well, they can encourage themselves to get better, to do more in their classrooms. You mentioned briefly, Barakulafikum, that if a student, uh, let's say, for example, they finish their homework very quickly, they can go and they can encourage themselves to do more homework. So it's to show the teacher that, look, this is what we're capable of. We're not, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, first of all, I, I just, the word need is okay mm -hmm. with me, but it is not very okay. okay. I think it, it should be some sort of essential or a must. We okay, so need, you're saying need is not strong enough. It's not strong okay. enough. <laughs> People need to understand that it is a must, it's to be or not to be. Okay. And this is not the Shakespearean yes, expression, but, but this is to be or not to be, because if the world is running beside you, if you don't catch up with them, you, all the time you will be in the tail. Mm -hmm. and, and there would be, at certain times you would be starving and dying, and while the rest of the people in the world are uh, surviving and they are living and enjoying their life. So we need to spread this culture. Mm -hmm. It's the very interesting that you use the word culture. So you are agreeing that it's a cultural it issue. Is, it is a cultural so issue. So what can people hope to possibly do when the whole culture is going one way and they want to go another way? We, need, we are the ones to change it. It is the people who got good quality of education, high amount of education, yeah. it's their job. It's their responsibility. The ministers, the leadership of the country, the leadership of the organization, the leadership of the household itself, like the wife and the husband, it should be part of our life. We should improve what we have. And even you mentioned it's the students can do. What can they do? It is not their direct responsibility, but if the culture, 
-hmm. spreads among them. So they would do this. They would do extra work by themselves and they would go yeah. to school and give the extra work to the teacher so the teacher may learn from them indirectly that there's always a need and there's a must for us to give opportunities for mm -hmm. people to push forward by raising the bar. Do you think, though, that even if a student is raised in a proper household, they go to a good school that teaches them this need to improve themselves and to raise their own expectations of themselves, when they go about in their own day-to-day -day lives and they live in a culture that is almost uh, complacent in just getting by, whether it's when they go to, out to restaurants, whether it's when they see people who clean the streets, whether it's when they see anything in, in, in the country's in infrastructure, is just basically doing the bare minimum. Don't you think that this is going to have a negative effect on them as well? An effect on them? Yeah. On the students? On the students. Yes, yes. of course. Because we're, we agree that the only way for a culture to improve itself is with the new generations. It's with very rare generation. that you're going to find the old generations improving themselves and changing the situation. You have to prepare the next generations to take charge, raise them better than we've been raised, and hope that they'll uh, make a better future, inshallah, for themselves in their own country. You but what about when the whole country itself is falling behind in that? That affects the children, doesn't Some it? Some people should start. Hmm. Some people should put the... the well, sort the, of organize, basically. Yeah, the bill. Yeah. So usually, the norm is the leadership of the country. Yeah. And then it moves to the lower level. Lower levels, yes. And if it does, if it spreads there, it will spread mm -hmm. everywhere. But I said that I, from my place here in this studio, I think this channel, Huda channel, is doing a good job in that, mm -hmm. opening the door for giving some topics to the audience mm -hmm. to teach them about something that's very important, that's relevant Islamically yeah. and relevant culturally and matches what's going on in the world. This is something very great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And we do thank uh, this uh, Huda TV for times. doing this job because still other TVs, they are very restricted and they are very close. They are not so open enough. Try to imagine that Muslims or non-Muslims now who are watching this kind of program and know the importance of this concept of raising the bar in every aspect of life, yeah. they will be affected. And from there, each one who watches this say that, why shouldn't I do this in my workplace? Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't I do this in my school? Why shouldn't I do this at home? Yeah. And this is how you formulate uh, your culture, yes. But it should be from Huda TV and from Peace TV, from, uh, from all local channels as public well, yeah. channels as well, uh, newspapers, television, television is a means magazines, that can, yeah. everybody should be speaking about raising the bar. And in this way the culture char starts to change gradually and by doing this we are going to affect the society that we live in. It's not necessarily to be a very big society. Mm -hmm. But now people should be ambitious, it should be the whole society, mm -hmm. because we have the tools now. Yeah, we have the satellites, we have the internet, we have all these. In the past it could have not be done, right? Because there were no means of communication at this level that we have right now. Yeah. So now we don't have excuses to start at a very large scale. We yeah. can do this. At I think it's, it's a matter of learning to expect more of ourselves yes. and not be satisfied with and just getting by. In I'd a, like to I'm not talking about obviously. Yes, go ahead. Not to expect high from ourselves, but from others as well. From others as well. Yes. And I think uh, that, that really um, highlights the issue is that a lot of people, they, whether it's services, whether it's uh, goods, whether it's quality of uh, customer. Product quality of products we we tend to just accept what's available and not expect more from these companies from these people from these restaurants from these individuals from these services we should learn to expect more we should learn to expect a good quality uh, assurance yes and I hope the people around us would would really focus on this because we expect high quality high quality of everything saves us time, saves us energy, saves yeah. us money. Yeah, exactly. It's very beneficial once we raise the bar with high quality. Okay, and uh, how would you say that these companies, if you want to address some of these companies, for example, that are just satisfied 
with doing the bare minimum. They don't really care about the quality of the service that they're yeah. providing or the quality of the goods Very that they good. provide. Remember the previous episode that we recorded where we were talking about how teachers become obsolete if they don't get training? Yeah, they need to the train their staff. Applies to, yeah, applies to any company mm -hmm. and any organization in the world. They will become obsolete very soon and they will disappear in the future. Well, I think Other companies yeah. that are raising the bar and raising the expectations, mm -hmm. they're going to continue, continue, continue. Yeah, so if I go to a restaurant now and I find that the quality of the food is consistently good, the environment is clean and it's affordable and it's, and it's, 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 it's accommodating, I will choose that restaurant over another restaurant no which doesn't provide a consistent quality, which doesn't provide a clean environment. Yes. And I think with the advent of the internet... By doing this, you are, do, you are making promotion for the company or for yeah. the restaurant. And I think uh, in terms of the customer themselves or the consumer themselves or the citizens themselves, how can they do this? They can start to organize online, and we've started to see this in some countries where basically they start to rate the services that are available. Yes. So if somebody's going to go buy, for example, a, a fridge, they're going to say, don't buy from this company. I bought a fridge from them, and when it broke down within the period of the warranty, they didn't, uh, they didn't come to my house. They didn't fix it. They made other problems. It's, and so I think citizens can really get together with the advent of Internet and communication and really become their own watch groups. The min the, what you mentioned right now about giving feedback yeah. and making surveys yeah. and people would say their opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, you go to the internet, you want to reserve a, a room in a hotel yeah. and you read... The comments, yeah. Comments. This hotel has cockroaches, this hotel has And this, some yeah. people would say this and this and this. Is. Now you have clear idea, particularly when you get 100 people are giving feedback on one hotel. Now you get clear idea about the hotel before you go. And not just you, the hotel management, oh, they're yeah. going to start to worry. They say, should work on that. They're going to say, look, we're, we're being represented like this because X, Y, Z, yeah. we have to improve ourselves. Yeah. And this is They'll be motivated too. a push yeah. for all the hotels mm -hmm. to compete with each other. And they would always try to do their best by raising the bar. Yeah. And this is something very b beneficial now. The rating issue is very vital tool yeah. that we should use all the time to... And it's everywhere online. We can go to... almost everywhere. Even if you go to, to YouTube, you go to Facebook, you, go, you just see likes, this is this, this. You can see how many people like something, dislike something. It's very much been uh, adopted yeah. in yeah. terms of the online culture. Yes, we need to put it and in so our I think as countries, I think as countries become more and more uh, online-based or more and more aware of, uh, of, of yes. uh, these things, they can start to apply it offline as well. In s so to speak. They can apply it in the way they rate uh, their services and their local goods and so on. Even at home you can use uh, the, the, <laughs> the rating issue. You do something and you ask the members of the house mm -hmm. yes, to evaluate it. Any experience. How would you like the food today? <laughs> how, how do you like the food today? If, if it's your wife it, asking you, you have to say, okay, I like it. <laughs> okay, of course, yeah. <laughs> But the first time I would say that, the second time I would really answer the... Uh, well, you get one of the kids to say it, <laughs> <laughs> to avoid you know, problems. Yeah. yeah, but again, we, we, we need to spread this culture and we need to encourage other uh, TV channels mm. to have a focus on this because we need it. It affects all our life. It affects every aspect of our every life. And that's what's so important about it, is that when we learn to be complacent in just in, accepting in what's the bare minimum, yeah. it affects us in every way that we... I have couple of books that I adopted this policy. Okay. A book about Hajj that I made. Yes. I authored 15 years ago and I said that I mm -hmm. gave evaluation for the Hajj trip that you made. Okay. For the quality of own, you are evaluating your own self. Yeah. And you are giving yourself Mashallah. a grade according to the criteria that had been selected. That's, that's a very interesting point that you raise, is that yes. people look should also evaluate themselves yeah. when it comes to their worship. So when they pray, for example, they say, did I really have full sincerity and devotion in my prayer was I was I completely devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when yeah. I prayed let's say uh, Aisha today or was I thinking about other things this is another important concept which is self-evaluation yeah. exactly. yes. it's an Islamic slogan yes and every Muslim yeah. so this something should be adopted by individuals and groups and organizations and this would lead us to uh, be a more better future inshallah yeah yeah, and a better society and so on. Jazakumullah khairan. We're just about out of time. Is there one final point you'd like to make? Any kind of advice you'd like to give to our viewers? Uh, 
the final point is uh, don't be pleased with whatever is given to you you have to be ambitious you have to say that we can do it better mm -hmm. it does not mean that you are criticizing the uh, current situation uh, yeah, but obviously you're not saying like it's about criticizing what Allah wrote for you. Alhamdulillah. Oh no, this is that we should expect more from each <laughs> no other. Negotiable at all. Yes, of course. Yeah, but but you can say that we do this prayer in the mosque, and I think the mosque needs to improve in these the level of cleanliness, mm -hmm. the clarity of the sound, yeah. the level of noise. Uh, the quality of this Friday sermon. The quality of the, yeah, yes. We Definitely. need to improve, yeah. yes, in every aspect of this. Okay. In other words, we're telling them that you have to raise the bar because this is not uh, answering the minimum or the passing grade in Islam. We need to all the time to go up mm -hmm. because any good quality khutbah mm -hmm. will affect the Muslims, the level of their thinking and the level of their iman. Yeah, I agree. I, I believe that if we can improve ourselves on a religious level in terms of our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then yes. that can trickle down to everything, inshallah, yes. especially uh, our education. Jazakallah yes. khairan. It's always a pleasure to have you in the studio. Barakallah fikum. Barakallah fikum. And thanks to our viewers for watching, inshallah. Till next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs>